Hello? Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my bungalow in Bali. I'm sitting at my desk this morning and I'm writing in all three of these journals. Well, I'm writing in two of them. <clears throat> and uh, I've got a journal that's my current journal. I've got a journal that's the novel I'm writing. And I have a journal that I wrote in six months ago. Because going back and reading something you wrote six months ago is extremely beneficial. I just made a post on Instagram sharing a little snippet of something I wrote this morning from the novel journal. And then I shared a few paragraphs about, I was pretty vague actually in the Instagram post. Um, but I was saying how doing a really big project like writing a book results it gives you big results, like a big input gives you a big output. And <clears throat> hello, hi Gary and Jerry. After making that post on Instagram, I felt like it would be good to come on and have a chat about it. And we've done so many silent live streams in the past month because I've been doing yoga in public studios or gyms where they have copyrighted music. And so I'm very excited to do a live stream where I'm actually speaking and actually get to talk with you guys. So, hello! <laughs> um, <clears throat> Let me show you my fun new outfit. I've had a fun week, a fun few weeks of adventuring. I've got new clothes. Look at these pants. Look at these like genie pants. And I've got new jewelry. Look at this fun stuff. <laughs> um, and so this is kind of what my life looks like right now, where I'm just walking around with all my journals and my cool new trousers with my super awesome rings. Voila. Um, <clears throat> I'm seeing changes in my life. And if you follow my journey, like if, you, if you're one of my regular followers, then you might be seeing the changes too. So I thought I'll use this, I use myself as an example and, and lead us in a little conversation today. And we can think about how is, you know, with our energy that we have in life, what are we putting our energy towards and what are we getting back? So when we, when we put a lot of energy into our exercise or our workout, we actually get a lot of energy back. That's like the craziest, coolest thing like law of the universe. I don't know if it's technically a law of the universe, but you know, you think maybe it's a little bit counterintuitive, but if you go to the gym and you really push yourself hard, you think you'd like collapse with exhaustion, but actually we leave like buzzing with energy. And in the same way, I'm working on a novel and a lot of the writing is heavy and sad and traumatic, not that it's a tragedy, but like the, the process of writing, I'm bringing up very dark feelings. And sometimes there's a dark moment in the book. Sometimes I take the dark feeling and I, I make it more playful. Um, so it's less about the actual book and more about what I'm feeling. I'm putting out, like pulling out of me these dark feelings. And then you would think geez, that woman would probably be very depressed after three months of digging in her dark feelings. But the opposite has been the case. I dig through all these dark feelings and then I pop out the other side with so much more joy and lightness and positivity than I've felt in a very long time. And... <clears throat>
in my experience, when I've noticed myself or other people shying away from doing difficult things, it's because we do not feel uh, connected or we do not feel uh, the trust or the faith or the belief that we're gonna get something back. Like there's this feeling that I'm gonna give so much and then I'm gonna be spent. I'm gonna go to these dark feelings and then I'm gonna get stuck there. I'm gonna put myself in this painful place and then I'm gonna be stuck in pain. And um, I think it takes a bit of an initiation, having somebody to guide us, someone who's been there before to show us how to get through the darkness and find light. And once someone else has shown us or once we've followed a path that's been left for us throughout history, like thousands of generations of humans have figured out how to travel through darkness and find light. And we learn from this and then we start to do it ourselves and now we can rely on our own experience. So I was, I was actually just in Ubud. It's a very spiritual town in the jungle in Bali. It's just swarming with yogi philosophy, meditating beings. I had a really good conversation with one of them and we were talking about this very idea, like how scary it is to, to, to go out in the dark, to leave the campfire or to, to leave the planet and to go explore deeper into space and leave the comfort and the light and the warmth of home. Like, how do you know you're going to find another star? How do you know you're going to find another fire? How do you know you're going to find another happy day? And the longer that we live and the more that we talk to other people who, who share their stories with us and we start to realize this, there's this cycle or this pattern of we're in a warm, light, wonderful, cozy moment of life. And then the next, the next part of the cycle comes like the night and the day or in the night, suddenly it's dark. We feel lost, we feel scared, we feel pain, but then the day comes again imagine if you've never lived through a, a night before it's your very first time going to sleep or it's your very first time seeing the sunset and you don't know if the sun's coming back <clears throat> um, it reminds me of when I when I left Seattle to come traveling in Asia and I felt fear of it wasn't crippling fear but there was fear there was like some nervousness of like what's it gonna be like am I gonna be safe um, very, very root chakra kind of questions. Just my body wanting to make sure that I'm going somewhere safe. You know, you don't know because it's unfamiliar. But then I've been here for a while and now like the idea of going to a new country or traveling around Southeast Asia or going home to Seattle and then coming back here, the fear isn't triggered because it's, it's familiar. So. Writing a book is um, a very big project that is allowing me to put in a lot of energy to go through a lot of really uncomfortable mem memories um, or feelings. But each time I go through one of them, it gets easier. It's still painful, but there's now this like belief or this understanding of the fact that like the light is coming, the day is coming. So in the first month when I was writing the book, it was very intense because I, I started to have panic and, and fear of like, well, what if I get stuck here? Like, what if, what if I write this book about what happened to me in the past and then I'm just stuck in the past and I'm perpetuating it? Like, no. <laughs> um, but I wrote from March, April, May, and June. So four months of working on the book and really digging in my past memories and emotions. And I was really, I, I, I was really scared of getting stuck there. Like, I don't know how much I shared with you guys online, but definitely with my friends and with my therapist, my writing coach, 
And in my journal, I was repeatedly being like, I am afraid of being stuck in the past. Like I am going into the past. I don't want to get stuck there, but I'm going into these past memories because I'm trying to pull out a lesson or understand something or grow from it or face it. And so it won't keep influencing me and controlling me. Like I didn't want to be controlled from stuff that, that was in the past. Also side note, there's like no such thing as time or past or future. Like I'm aware of this, but <laughs> so, uh, and then the month of July, I've spent being really light and traveling and socializing and not writing so much. And I felt my energy like woo, zoom forward into the present and get more light. And, and I felt the rewards of like, I went and I did this dark work in the shadowy space. And then I felt it like the power that it had over me kind of just dissolved. And um, I was able to be lighter and happier. Like people that I met this month, this past month were, people were attracted to me. They're just like coming up to me. I was in a restaurant, someone walks up to me. I was in a yoga studio, someone walks up to me. And they just approach me and they're just like, excuse me, like, can I, can I ask you out to dinner? Excuse me, can, would you like to go with me to a yoga class? Would you like to come dancing with me tonight? Excuse, like just, and not um, a different than being hit on. Like it wasn't like, hey, you're cute. Like, can we go out dancing? It was more of a, like a deeper soul pull. Like people were seeing me and they're like, there's something about you that is drawing me over. Like you got like a lightness about you. And what's super interesting is that before, in the last four months, March, April, May, June, nobody came and talked to me at all. Everyone left me alone. I was out in public and people did not approach me. And I was in my dark little like me bubble, writing my novel. And then I put the novel away, take a big breath, come out in the world. And I, I didn't realize anything had really changed. I was at the cafe just thinking like, wow, this is really nice to have a break from the novel. I feel really light. I feel, I feel really happy. Life seems a lot better than it did before I started writing the novel. I feel like I've made a lot of growth and progress. Like, hmm, yay. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Yes. People just like started coming. Um, and the people that I was attracting to me this past week have all been super, uh, like a perfect fit, like very similar passions. Uh, I met a woman who's a free diver who's also writing a novel. I've met a woman who's a musician who wants to live in LA and Bali and she wants, she's like, she was searching for someone to help her with electronic music and she wants to do sound baths and sound healings that are inspired by mermaids. Um, I met a man who uh, was a yogi and he was so beautifully present. Like he wasn't rushing around trying to accomplish anything. He was just happy to sit there and look at the sunset and smell the flowers. So I had a really lovely afternoon with him where that's literally what we did. We just sat there and we're like, look at that flower. Look at that tree. Don't you love trees? I love trees. Look at that sunset. Look how the clouds move. And my whole time with him was that, which was so um, needed for me because I find a little, most of the people that I talk to want to talk about stuff, like ideas and things and feelings. And it's just such a relief to be in someone's presence when they just want to be present with the world that we're sitting in. Um, <clears throat> If you're familiar with chakras, if you think of sh chakras as being like little flowers, and when your chakras are closed or blocked, um, like your energy in your body is closing and shutting down, you can think of it like a, a flower closing. And then when you do practices that help you open up, like, meditating, yoga, writing, you're doing all these things to like help the energy flow through you. Instead of being stuck and stuck and afraid, you're like blossoming open, blossoming open. Yeah. So that's kind of what I've been feeling. It's like going through life and there's little, there's little blockages, there's little contractions and tight, tight spots in the body. And then when I'm writing, 
I meditate and I'm feeling around my body and searching, and this is where I do yoga, like I'll do a yoga pose and I'll scan my body with my, my awareness, looking for where is there tension. And different yoga poses will help bring different tensions to the surface. And then you focus in on this tension and you kind of study it and feel it. And then for me, I start to transform it into words. So how would I describe this tension in words? What images does it evoke? What memories does it bring up? What triggers in my imagination? And then this is what I start to write down. This is what becomes becomes my journal. Oh, that's a terrible sound. It's what becomes my journaling and it's what's becoming the novel. Um, and then once that tension has been unwound and expressed in the form of art, it's actually been transformed. So you're not just pulling at your tension, trying to make it let go. You're not pushing it away, trying to pretend it doesn't exist. You're actually taking it and like Rumpelstiltskin, you're taking straw and you're transforming it into gold. And now you've got a pile of gold, which is like your new novel. And there's no tension in your body left. So it's using art as a way to transform what was a wound or a tension in the body something that was really like hurting you or holding you back in life. Instead of just focusing on it and trying to change it or get rid of it, you use it, look at it, like really look at it. And this is where it's hard and dark and scary and painful is to actually look at it. Like you're pulling a splinter out. You gotta focus on it and dig into it and grab it. And it's painful to dig in and grab. Like you know when there's a splinter in your skin, it, sometimes it's, you have to push on and dig around and it causes more pain but you do it because you know you need to pull it out. So I think, I think a lot about this as a metaphor that really helps me is that we have these splinters in our mind or these splinters in our emotional body where we don't wanna look at it because it's like pushing on it. But if you can take a big breath and calm yourself down and find that courage and, de and decide, I'm going to look at this painful thing and I'm going to to press on it, to understand it, like where is it, what, ca what causes the pain, and then you, you have your tool. So, you know, if it's a splinter, you're using tweezers. For me, it's a, it's a pen, like, I'm, and I've got my journal, and I'm like, oh, I'm thinking, my mind is exploring the pain, and I'm like, oh, describe it, oh, it hurts when I think about this, oh, it feels better when I think about that, it makes me see the color orange, oh. I feel the tension in my, my left chest. Like I just start to describe it. And, and then a little bit by little bit, it pulls out. And then you can bring in this creative energy. And the minute, the minute you start to be creative with it, you are filled with power. So it, it takes you from victim to being very empowered because you go from, oh, this hurts and I'm just living with this pain to like, what are you gonna do with it? You can use it to create something new. So how would you describe this pain in sound? Like if you're a musician, how would you describe this pain in color? If you're a painter, how would you describe this in words? If you're a writer, how would you, how would you describe this or express this in t flavor? If you're a chef, uh, how would you express this pain in, in fabric? If you want to be if like a fashion designer or a stylist, like what clothing, would you wear that would help to express this part of you? Um, and, in, and then that's kind of where the magic, the magic that I love, I experience that. It happens in the moment of creation. So you're taking something that was and you're creating something new and in the process, your relation to this thing changes and instead of you being the like the victim of this pain, now you're the creator of this art. And your pain was your collaborator or your inspiration. And you're back in a place of being in self. Um, <clears throat> and that's a really nice place to be because then you realize no matter what happens or you're always, you always have fuel and no matter what happens to you no matter what pain you experience you you're a creator so you'll always have something to draw from 
and the fact that we have the ability, as humans, we have the ability to make art, so you always have at your disposal the medicine or the tool to heal whatever happened to you. This is how I live, and what I, why I wanted to begin sharing more about this um, in my Instagram post and then here on YouTube today. Um, I was just feeling really grateful. Like I was I really, really grateful to wake up and grab my journals and to everything I just described to you is what I experienced this morning. Like I'm writing, feeling pain, feeling transformation, playing with creativity, feeling darkness and then joy. And then I just kind of zoomed back and I was like, wow, everything I just shared with you is what I'm learning through the process of creating It's what I've been learning for um, almost like two decades of creating in many different mediums. And right now it's really focused on writing. That's it. I just wanted to share. And I'll take a moment here to read your comments. And then I'm going to sign off because I'm going to go and um, continue writing today but I'll move from handwriting to typing. So different, a different means of writing actually results in, it leads to different results, a different voice, a different, a different speed. <laughs> okay. Hello, okay, it's nice to see all of you guys. Thank you for all of your lovely comments. Thank you for liking my genie pants. Um, I do feel very comfortable traveling alone now. Thank you, Gary, for... Oh, my new jewelry keeps getting stuck in my hair. Thank you for um, seeing me along the way. I'm feeling very excited about the fact that I feel comfortable traveling alone. Very liberating. Um, Chris says, I think you should be writing when you turn 80 and you have so much to live for, still young and pretty. I don't think Chris understands uh, the val. It sounds like you're t suggesting me to go live and to write later. Um, I think you're, we could have a long conversation to help clarify that. I think there's a misunderstanding happening here. Essentially, writing, yoga, healing, telling stories, expressing yourself is a lifelong journey. It's, it's not something to be put off. Um, my life is richer because of the creativity that I do. Um, I will also probably be writing and creating when I'm 80 years old. And if you think that writing, processing, healing is like somehow taking away from the joy that I experience in my life, then you're mistaken. <laughs> Um, it sounds just from the impression I get based on that, only that comment and not knowing you, um, like you may not have adventured very much yet into this realm, um, or you might have a different understanding of, of it, like what make to be young and alive and have a lot to live for, like, yeah art <laughs> yes I have a whole life to live and make art the whole way I can't wait to hear the music and the things I'm going to write when I'm 80 and I'm so excited to look back and see what I wrote when I'm 20 when I was 20 like some of the most beautiful powerful pieces of art came out of teenagers and, and people in their 20s and in people that are way beyond that in age like at no point in the life of a human is there an appropriate or inappropriate time to create art. Like we can't help ourselves, we're literally creating. It starts with like doodling and finger painting and you know what, it goes in a full circle and, and when you get very, very old, you might find yourself finger painting again and loving it. My grandmother was like 95 uh, and all the time she was giving us like these paintings that she made that looked like a six-year-old did them and she had a great time doing it she had elmer's glue sticking seashells onto construction paper <laughs> and honestly if my mental capacity goes downhill and when i'm 80 years old 
all I'm able to create is seashells glued to construction paper. I'm really grateful that I started creating when I was in my 20s or, be, or like now I'm in my 30s because that, this is probably a peak, you know? <laughs> I'm not gonna risk it and wait until I'm 80 to get down all my stories because by then, who knows what will have happened to me. Okay, Chris, I hope you feel thoroughly um, seen, heard, listened to, and hopefully not too attacked. I just appreciate your comment um, for stirring up some of that. Okay, Michael said, expressing art, such as describing art, is an art. It is an art to describe art, isn't it? Gary says, do you think just writing the novel is all you need for your health and the novel itself does not need to be published? Or will your novel help us channel similar pain in our creativity? I think what you're asking, Gary, is, is it enough for me to write the novel for myself and never publish it? Or is publishing the novel and sharing it with all of you guys an important part of the process? Um, I think it's a yes and. On the one hand, for me, just writing a novel and any other project I do, there's step one is creating it for myself. And then the next step in the process is sharing it. And that's a whole different experience. It's like, I'm seeing a rose closing and then opening. I'm seeing um, a butterfly in the cocoon. Like there's these moments that are internal that are just for us. And then there's the time where we go out and fly in the world and they go together. So when you see artists creating and performing, they are in a state of flow within themselves that they do for themselves and there is pleasure and joy and fulfillment and completion and wholeness and togetherness in sharing it. And if we don't share it, sometimes it's like there's this wave that doesn't go through. It's like, like a wave, like you do it for yourself and then you wanna share it with other people. And then sharing it with other people inspires you and gives you feedback that then helps you go back into your own practice to do it for yourself in a new way. And then you go back and share how you grew and what you discovered with the audience. So it's, it's like a feedback loop. And um, I know a lot of people that think that the sharing is an essential part. But I also, I think it can go either way. If you create something and you feel it's just for you, that's beautiful. If you feel compelled to share, then follow through and, and share. Don't overthink it. Um, thank you for your kind comments. Yeah, Gary, you just reiterated what I was saying. Some people create amazing art when they are young and continue to make amazing art their entire lives. Exactly. All of us are doing this. Okay. Perfect. Thank you guys for commenting and for listening to what I wanted to share this morning. Um, that's all for now. Have a beautiful day. My fun little fish is gonna swim away. See ya.